Car prices are absolutely out of control. Hey folks, I'm glad you're here. Today I'm gonna to cover everything from what's going on the new and used car prices, delinquency updates, interest rates, and how they're affecting the car loan market. Plus I'm going to dig into how many of us have car loans over a thousand bucks a month, what the best and worst cars are for depreciation, and I'm going to give you six key takeaways on how to navigate this crazy car market. Full disclosure, I look at car values all day long for my day job, so my hope is I can share a little bit of industry insight with you. All that and more coming up next. Let's go. All right, so new cars are more expensive than ever, with the average price of a new car skyrocketing 30% in the past four years. What was an average of 31,000 10 years ago has soared $18,000 to nearly $49,000 today. The pandemic and resulting supply chain issues and chip shortages were a shock to the industry. The prices of used vehicles are starting to come down a little bit, with year-over-year -year decreases of nearly 12% to about $27,000. I don't think a used car for that price point is something to celebrate, really, especially especially considering that the Federal Reserve is noting a spike in delinquencies on new and used car loans for all age groups. Those under 40 are faring the worst. This makes sense though, as the age group of 30 to 39 borrows the most. Real quick folks, you deserve the absolute best content. If you feel this is helpful and informative, I'd appreciate the feedback. I read through many hours of different publications and news sources to be able to present accurate and current information for you. It helps me out a ton. Thanks. To cap that off, there's a new trend over the last few years where more Americans are splurging on the nicer cars with luxury vehicles making up 20% of sales so far this year and the average luxury vehicle costing over 65 grand. Bloomberg put out an article stating that new cars are for the rich and that the average monthly payment is $777. CBS says that nearly 15% of all new car purchases resulted in car payments of more than $1,000 a month. I can't say that I agree that it's only rich people buying expensive cars. I personally I personally know plenty of people that I would consider middle class with middle class incomes that buy higher end cars. If they were rich, would they really be taking on car payments and paying five or 6% interest? Wouldn't we also see massive demand for more affordable vehicles from the middle class, the people that make up the majority of the country? And then wouldn't that demand force the manufacturers to meet that demand with a more cost effective inventory? Instead, I think that there's a certain percentage of Americans that have an appetite for newer and nicer cars and the manufacturers are happy to oblige and see how far they can take this. In the non-luxury category, there are now just 10 models to choose from that are under 25,000, which makes up just 4% of sales. The inventory of vehicles under 25,000 has absolutely plummeted, which is the exact opposite trajectory of luxury vehicles over $60,000. However, according to the Federal Reserve, we have about 105 million auto loans out there, which make up approximately 31% of the population. Okay, it doesn't appear that the manufacturers are blameless when it comes to putting upward pressure on prices. GM and Ford are intentionally keeping the prices of new vehicles high by keeping their inventory of new cars at about half of what it used to be. They're trying to make the pandemic related and inflationary related price gains stick. Kind of like a ratchet, they only want prices going one way. As a result, GM recorded a record profit of $14.5 billion and Ford wasn't far behind at $10.4 billion. Besides the obvious incentive to sell cars at the highest price point possible, they also want to benefit as the bank. Car manufacturers play a massive role in the financing of new cars, even more so than traditional banks. Experian estimates that more than 61% of new car financing is done through the auto manufacturer or dealership. They're as much a bank as they are a manufacturer. So what are the six key takeaways and my recommendations? Well, the first one is that interest rates may continue to go up from where they are currently. The stated goal of the Fed is to reduce inflation by slowing down the economy, even if it's a bit bumpy. They do this by increasing the cost to borrow. As they make borrowing more expensive, businesses are less inclined to borrow and take risks. This means less hiring, less expansion, and as a result, less employment. This will result in the cost to take out a car loan going up, which will put pressure on the prices of cars to go down, or at least not increase. Hopefully we'll see this trend of used car prices continue to drop. The only caveat to that is the implosion of Silicon Valley Bank, which may have spooked the Fed some. Time will tell. Next, I recommend that you don't buy a new vehicle unless you can pay cash for it. If you buy a new vehicle, you're participating in this insanity and just encouraging these manufacturers to keep doing what they're doing. Is financing a new car for 800 bucks a month really the best financial decision we can be making? Lending Tree and Ramsey Solutions highlight that a new car typically drops about 10% in value once you drive it off the lot. It drops another 10% by the end of the first year and after five years, it will have lost anywhere from 40 to 60% of its original value. It's a depreciating 
asset and a terrible place to sink money. Now, if you must finance a vehicle, try to minimize the damage. In general, Toyotas and Hondas have a great reputation for holding their value. Specifically, a Jeep Wrangler, Toyota Tacomas, Tundras, and 4Runners, plus Nissan Frontiers all lose value, but at a slower pace. In my area, you can throw a Honda, Accord, CRV, and Pilot in there as well. On the flip side, don't buy a Nissan Leaf, Chevy Volt, or Ford Fusion. This list specifically points out a BMW 7 Series or Mercedes-Benz S-Class, but I would just say that most luxury vehicles, especially German-made, are going to take a massive hit in value once you drive it off the lot. The reason for this is because the older it gets, the more expensive it becomes to maintain, and people know this. I can't tell you how many people I've worked with who really wanted a luxury vehicle, but after dealing with $150 oil changes and $350 run-flat tires, that they realize it's not all it's cracked up to be, and they decided to sell it. Let somebody else take the hit and buy a reliable used car and pay cash for it. I buy used cars, and if you do your due diligence and research up front, you're proactive with routine and preventative maintenance, they're going to be fine. Even in this market, there's no reason you can't get a good family vehicle with room and some good entertainment and safety features for about a half or even a third of what you'd pay for a new car. If you must finance it, do it for the shortest time period that you can. Ideally, it would be 24 to 36 months. Don't be average at 70 months just to make the payment lower. The longer you finance it, the more tolerant you'll be of a higher purchase price. We really need to break the cycle of chasing these car prices up and up. As a country, we owe over $1.5 trillion in car loans. We hear people all the time talk about the student loan crisis, but look at this chart from the Federal Reserve. 9% of our total debt is student loans, and another 9% is car loans. Lastly, take that money you've saved by purchasing a reasonable used car and plop the difference into a Roth IRA or increase your 401k contributions. You'll build seven-figure wealth over the long term, and you'll have no issue buying whatever car you want, paying cash for it, and not even feeling any pain over the purchase. If you like this video, check these videos out that are more like it, and I'll catch you later.